Dell laptop. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to DGN. My name is Wolf. And I am QED Shockwave. We have a bit of a downy here, but we are going to be presenting to you some news within the gaming community or whatnot. And so basically, we, we have like two major news updates for this week that I've seen. Uh, both of them being relatively big news, whether you like it or not. But let's uh, start off with our first one. Your typing is really loud, but that does not matter. First up, we have ourselves Unreal Engine 4. Uh, it'll momentarily switch over to that page because this is a slow computer and it'll take its sweet ass time, I'll give you that. But basically, Unreal Engine 4 has officially been announced. It's been, uh, it's been in the works for recent time. And uh, right here we have a little picture of the uh, Unreal Engine 4. Uh, it's actually being uh, used with uh, a few games right now, a lot of them in development. Uh, I would imagine um, like new Gears of Wars games that are coming, or, what, or games made by uh, Epic, uh, Epic, Epic or whatever. I think it's Epic Games who does like all those games or anything. They'll be uh, using uh, Unreal Engine 4. There's just uh, It's just really, really pretty from what you can see. And, uh, yes. Uh, what are your thoughts on the Unreal Engine so far? Uh, from what I've seen, I've seen the um, Infiltration trailer. Just like a tech, which, tech demo, essentially. Yeah, it's a basically a tech demo, and it's all pre-rendered stuff, but it actually looks really amazing, and I'm a, someone who's played on all three currently released um, engines. Well, so I played the first Unreal Tournament, second one. I haven't played the third one, unfortunately, but I've played Gears of War, so I've gone through, played all three of the current re released um, Unreal Engines, and finally they're releasing the fourth one, so I say it's about damn time. Well, it's, it's actually uh, something we'll actually have a look at right now. We have a picture here of a comparison from all the engines. We have the Unreal 1 engine, which uh, you got Malcolm there from all three of uh, Unreal, Tour uh, Unreal Tournament and then Unreal to Tournament 2004, or is that Unreal? Yeah, got Unreal Tournament, Unreal Tournament 2004, I think, and uh, then we got UT3. So that's kind of awesome. And then we got the uh, uh, UT4 engine, uh, UE Engine 4, which is kind of amazing. Uh, if you look at the comparison of it, um, just from the um, from the tech demo, what are you, what are your thoughts about it? What do you think has improved since the uh, Unreal Engine 3? Cut scenes, like. I know it was pre-rendered, but any like rendered cutscenes in a game will already be pre-rendered anyway. Yeah. So, what I remember from all the Gears of War games, like I wasn't really like the cutscenes were fluid, yes, but weren't as fluid as they could be at the time because. But at, for Gears of War three, we had the Halos, the Call of Duties, the Battlefields, all those really popular games that had amazing cutscenes and Unreal. The Unreal Engine, Unreal 3 engine was seem somewhat lacking at the time, if you understand what I mean. And the cutscenes weren't as smooth, weren't as crisp, but that could also be more towards the theme that Gears of War was. So it's a bit hard to judge because that might have been the theme that Gears of War was going for. But personally, I didn't like the Unreal 3 engine. It was a good engine, but the cutscenes were behind all the other engines. You have to remember though that there are many, many games that have been made on the Unreal 3 engine and a lot of them do actually have fairly nice looking cutscenes. For example, the pre-rendered stuff in Unreal Tournament 3, yes you haven't played it, but the Unreal t uh, Tournament 3, uh, well the, the Unreal, th wait is it, is, no it's just not, it's not Unreal Tournament, it's just Unreal 3, anyway. Um, the uh, engine in that is relatively nice. Uh, is, is looks pretty nice. One thing that I have noticed though, within the difference of uh, Unreal uh, 3 and uh, Unreal 4 engine, is the um, is the lighting. The lighting and and whatnot is significantly enhanced uh, in the UT uh, Unreal engine Unreal Engine 3. It's I'm getting a bit confused because I'm used to saying Unreal Tournament and whatnot. Anyway, mm. it's like the uh, it's just the lighting and the shadows. Uh, looking is looks a lot better if you. 
you have a look at the uh, Unreal Engine 3 picture of Malcolm, you can see that it's really glossy and light on one side, but if you have a look at the Unreal uh, Engine 4 view, uh, picture over here, you can see that there's actually the, the back shadows and the shadows on the left side, fa le or right hand side of the face of, the, of that picture. Uh, let's just quickly go back to this picture back here. Well, another thing is the attention to detail and like whatnot and weather effects. Um, from the uh, from that pic from that video, what are your thoughts on it? Um, from the video, I actually thought like they chose the setting environment that would best show it off, which was the quick contrast between dark and light colors, um, all the different kinds of things that could be could be going on in the background as well because I remember from the tech demo video that um, they actually ended up having the um, infiltrator looking at it as cityscape and it was dark in the foreground but you could see the lights of the craft lifting into the sky and the, what I assume would be the moon shining down onto the city illuminating the background and it shows you the color contrast of the entire thing and it's I found it to be quite amazing. I know I was sitting there speechless the whole time. Well, I, I know this we're talking about the Unreal Engine here and it's like it's I was about to actually I'll before I get into that segue, um there are a lot of games uh, now that are coming into development that are being that are using this engine. And um one of the games is called dark light or something you basically have a smartphone which has a compass on it and you're using the smartphone's light to navigate through this abandoned hos hospital it's like a survival horror game uh, and it from what I've seen the uh, I know it was or it was just like a tech a tech build of the uh, of the game um, but from what I've seen so far the textures haven't been that great in un unrendered areas but then again this game was still only in development and is all subject to change and is more than likely going to be looking a lot prettier by the end of it but that's actually mm -hmm. the first playable game with um, with uh, the Unreal Engine f uh, 4 and from, from that you can see that the uh, lighting effects have been uh, quite, uh, quite amplified um, so that's kind of awesome um, but yeah, what was my segue that I was going to use? Oh crap! Oh yes, that's why you write it down. Um, no, it's just the um, comparing it to other engines. So let's say a new engine that's coming out real soon or have just come out. Let's uh, actually this will be a great segue into our next topic. But um, say um, the, our next topic is Battlefield Four, by the way. So just so you, you know, so the new spoilers. Spoiler alert! Whatever. Um, so if you look at the uh, un the Frostbite three, I guess it, they're calling it, uh, and this and this, how would you compare it? Well, from both trailers we've seen, I'm quite the bigger fan. Like I'm a bigger fan of the Frostbite engine because I played more games on the Frostbite engine. Um, from the, the two different trailers, both were pre-rendered, obviously, but one was a gameplay trailer. So it won't have the full cutscene capability that we could see with the Frostbite 3 engine, but we can see that um, the colors blend more night. Like we got a wide of a range of colors in the Frostbite 3 engine trailer. So you can see the quick contrast. How you can go from the basically yellow sands of the desert to the rusted steel of the refinery next to it. it. That's just a quick color contrast that might not pick up on people, but if you've got that sharper eye, you can see how smoothly it contrasts as well, because you've got the wind sweat um, corroded iron slowly going into the normal corroded iron, and how they did that is amazing, and actually having an engine that's able to do that and still show itself off in a game, because that's what it was, a gameplay trailer. So you can see that in the game. You can imagine what will be done in the cutscenes and anything that's pre-rendered. So let's actually just segue. Like, yes. Uh, so we've basically talked about uh, what we can about Unreal Four. But before we go into Battlefield, uh, could, is there anything, any sort of closing uh, comments you want to make about the engine and what sort of possibilities you are hoping for in the future? Um, I'm just hoping that they keep improving the engine because what we've seen is just slowly working their way towards what they want to compete in the ever-growing gaming industry. 
But I think they've actually finally figured out the little thing that they needed to start getting an engine that's in competition with the rest. And I know that any good gaming company that knows when they've struck gold, they'll stick with it, keep improving on it, and make sure they give what the fans want. So the key thing here right now is listening to the fan advice on um, Unreal Engine 4, and they will end up with a really, really powerful engine in the end. But you, as I mentioned before, you can't forget that originally the Unreal Engines were not as powerful as some of the other engines out there today. But they're finally starting to move in and catch up, which is what I'm finally, which is what I quite like actually. So, yeah. But you have to one one argument I have to that you have to remember that the Unreal Engine has always been about performance on high end and low end. The a lot of the games mm. uh, they have been really good for like high end PCs. They have looked really pretty, and not a lot of uh, frame drops is very well optimized for high end PCs. Maybe not when it first comes out, but it's it's been out for like three four years. No, it's been about four five years now since you Unreal Engine three was out, and uh, it's been optimized to the shit house, and it was. Um, it mm. looks really nice and it's well polished like uh, Arkham, Asi- Arkham City that was on uh, Unreal Engine 3 and that looks pretty nice you have to admit and it mm. lo- so like it's been optimized greatly and a lot of and really modified to suit the needs of the developers but like I'm it, you have to remember that yes it is just catching up but it's all uh, the Unreal Engine has always been about a uh, the developer, uh, developer uh, being able to customize whatever they want, and being able to um, just perform on low end machines. Um, but yeah, that's basically what I wanted to close with. That. So yeah, that is the one last look at the Unreal Engine, f- f- Unreal f- Engine Four. That's really hard to say for some reason. Uh, so yeah, that is about it. Let's move on to our next topic. Oh great, it's going to be taking a moment to switch cameras again so let's move on to our next uh, uh, topic which is battlefield 4 uh, there has been a lot of um, images or, or images and videos or whatnot which is apparent being apparently been leaked which is which I get quite cynical about and skeptical about and uh, so I think that um, that they've been leaked on purpose uh, as like a as like a marketing thing like these days they're leaked but every single game is leaked, uh, so I, I get a bit edgy, especially when all of the games uh, things being leaked is from Activision and EA, and they're like my least favorite two companies at the moment. But anyway, it's beside the point. Um, so we got Battlefield 4 here. We got the the uh, leaked sorry cover art here. We got ourselves the uh, good old soldier running towards the camera in a low light um, next to no color spectrum raining on a road with a Bradley, I think, in the background. I think that's a Bradley. No, that's just an APC of some form with the orange hint on it or whatever. So, basically, um, Battlefield 4 is looking nice and uh, it, it is uh, pretty good. Uh, could you explain your thoughts on the... Uh, First off, we'll uh, finish off the... Uh, actually, we'll get a little bit more into the engine. Like, we've already skipped over it a little bit before. Just talk about what your thoughts are on the gameplay from the gameplay trailer we've seen. Well, from what I've seen, um, they haven't really done much work on the AI, unfortunately. So, the AI in the campaign is still looking to be a little bit dull as usual. If you know what you're doing gone through it a couple of times, or if you're a seasoned FPS player, uh, they're fairly easy to get through, and which is quite unfortunate, because Battlefield, despite being realistic, um, having those slightly dumber AI, but then again, most AI are dumb in FPS, unfortunately, to say, but um, if it, I haven't seen any noticeable changes from the AI from what I've seen, like, that's my major pick with FPS engines, specifically designed for FPS or third-person shooting or just shooting in general that involves you shooting AI is they need to slowly branch up with the players. Like, the difficulty doesn't improve anything. It doesn't improve the AI's awareness. It just improves how much damage they do to you, pretty much. What they need to start doing now is I, it's going to be a lot harder because with current technology, I understand that, but with smarter AI, um, how do I put this? 
higher difficulties mean smarter AI. Like, you can look at what Blizzard have done, for example. Like, I know it's probably one of the worst examples because Blizzard is famous for their... RTS. Uh, Blizzard's famous for Warcraft and RTS, and RTS engines are a lot more AI intensive. Yeah. But you can see what they've done with the... versus AI. You can... What they've done now with the new Heart of the Swarm, you can choose the AI. And then they've also programmed in specific strategies for that AI difficulty. So you can choose a very easy opponent, a very easy AI that just cannon rushes you all day. See, that's the thing though. Uh, let's just quickly talk about AI uh, and let's use that. If you look at other g FPSs that I've seen, so let's have a look at, let's say... Um, okay, now this is actually going to be a bit harder than I thought. Uh, okay, let's look at, what's it called? I know it's not like the MMS genre. Let's look at Twitch shooters. So, Unreal Engine, Unreal Tournament 3. Uh, Unreal 3 or whatever. The, if you're just versing a bots game and put that onto, like, insane AI, it's actually really hard, and not just because they, they, they don't do more damage, they seek you out better, they use better paths, and they know they shoot a lot more accurately. And it's just like, I, I definitely think that the AI, especially team-friendly AI in MMSs, they are genu genuinely useless. For example, you have a squad of like three people with you, whatever, they're firing down on an enemy position, and then you just go around and kill every single one of them in that entire time of them poking out of cover your friendlies didn't get a single kill what is with that mm, like I think at, like the allied AI is another thing to be picky at as well because it does nothing like any game you can see like I can think of maybe two or three games where they've actually hit the nail on the head with friendly AI and unfortunately those series are no longer in production anymore uh, such as the um Rainbow Six oh yeah that was actually pretty good games although they'll, they'll... they hit the they hit the nail on the head with the AI there I don't know what engine they were using but they hit it on the head like the uh, enemy AI and the friendly AI, it's just amazing how they managed to get that, and at the time, that's, if I can quickly pull that up, I think Ve Rainbow Six Vegas 2 was released when Call of Duty 4 was? Yes, like around then, but just to burst your bubble, Something around actually, that time. I just want to burst your bubble and make you fanboy out a little bit, there is actually a Rainbow Six game coming out called Patriots. It's, I uh, haven't heard of that. Yeah, well, basically, it's their upcoming Ubisoft's title. Actually, speaking of Ubisoft, another game that they made which had great AI, Far Cry 3. The AI in that... Yes, yeah, Ubisoft always does great AI. Uh, yeah, actually, yeah. Because the AI in that seek you out, hunt you down, and will uh, come after you if you shoot or make a noise. That In that game, it does some pretty great AI. Like uh, I know it's it doesn't f take after the MMS genre, but the AI in this is just so scripted, like, it just does you, they can't do anything else. That's, like, something that they really need to fix up in the MMS genre is, like, stop scripting, even scripting the AI, and let the AI do their own thing. I know it was... Mm. I know it was a little bit derpy, but in like Skyrim, the dragons being able to do whatever they want, that was kind of awesome. The Skyrim's, uh, the dragons just mm. flying around, ra land on a, a random building inside the city, and then start blowing fire down from above. That was kind of awesome. I ended up getting a picture of that and posting it on Facebook simply because of how awesome it was. It was just this random moment of being inside a city and then having a dragon fly over, land on uh, on top of a cathedral, and start killing people. Now that was kind of awesome, you have to admit. Yeah, it was. Um, unfortunately, I don't have it. Don't have it. sales. Here we go. Um, yeah, Call of Duty Four: Modern Warfare was a 2007 release for 360 Windows and um, PS3. Yeah. And the um, engine. I can't remember what engine they use. They use the Infinity Ward 3.0 engine for that. So. Somewhat up to date graphics, fairly reasonable AI. But what this goes back to our previous topic the Sony Vegas, um, not Sony Vegas, whoops, <laughs> the Rainbow Vegas 2, the Rainbow Six Vegas 2 engine, they ran the Havoc and the Unreal Engine 3. Yeah. 
And that game was released, I think, not even five months. Yeah, five months after Call of Duty 4. It didn't get as much sales, unfortunately. It's a great game, but um, it's the... Uh, it Ram is a really good game. The Rainbow Six series, though, is very underrated, and for some reason, Call of Duty is just blown up to be whatever it is, same as Battlefield, but whatever. That's a whole different story. But, like, it's just something that... The AI is just it leaves something to be desired, and that's just it's a shame, really, because the whole let's get into like the next topic I want to go into is the heavy scripted nature of Battlefield 4 and, and its return. So from in the um, in the what's it called trailer, there was many times where you had to go. You there was one moment where they went inside a uh, construction yards like train car thing, and you go up it or whatever, and um, and at a certain point, a helicopter comes and shoots down the cable car, so you have to fall off. So, like, what are your thoughts on the scripted nature of Battlefield 4, just from, like, gameplay demo, and then explain about just the heavily scripted nature of uh, FPS campaigns I in general nowadays? Well, I know you're probably going to flame me about this because <laughs> of the armor, how unscripted the Armor 3 campaign is going to be, but with... Battlefield 4 and Modern Warfare 3, you, they're so used to having scripted campaigns, heavily scripted campaigns, it's hard for them to break out of it and still keep their popularity with gamers. Well, it doesn't even... Like, no, 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 stop, stop right there. Okay, so what about... They still they can still have the narrative. I know Alma 2 didn't really do it that well because Bohemia Interactive are still actually developing as a developer. But like uh, Alma 2, and if you look at their uh, campaigns, what they do is basically just plop you down in an area and then you get a set of objectives and there's just random banter in between the two, the characters. So it's basically very simple. It's like simpleton AI, uh, simpleton uh, campaign, whatever. Like it's that's in a it's it's very linear. But like, you um, but you are in an open area. So, for example, why not have a campaign where you got to attack this target and not just put you in a freaking corridor and make you be able to find attack your target any way possible? Anyway, continue your rant. But like, that's the thing. Call of Duty and Battlefield they need to have that scripted campaign. Like, I see what Treyarch tried to do with um, Black Ops 2 campaign. I played it. Um, I see what they tried to do. They gave you those morality choices once again and only certain games are able to pull off the morality choices. Spec Ops the line. Un <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, unfortunately, like, unfortunately for me, Black Ops 2 hit the nail on the head. Like, I, like with Black Ops 2, it's been so, you go here, you kill them, you do this. It's been like that all the way through. I was disappointed to find out that we had a choice at the very end, not going to spoil anything. Well, probably will, but then again, whoever's watching and hasn't played but, um, Black Ops 2 and calls himself a gamer like, should seriously reconsider their life choices. Oh, but wait, 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 wait. Before, you have the choice. Wait, 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 wait. I haven't played the game. You know why? Because I don't give a fuck about the Call of Duty series, and I still call myself a gamer. You know why? Because I play significantly superior games. But anyway, continue your, con your conversation. <laughs> yes, Black Ops well, 2 spoiler you're ended. You're but F like, I started as an FPS gamer. Yeah, I guess I started as RTS. But anyway, continue. So, Spoil Black Ops 2 for me so I don't have to yeah. play the game. Yeah, so basically, in the end, you have the choice of killing him or capturing him. And at the very end, it still doesn't matter what you get to choose because, once again, they've tried to go the really hot. They've gone with the morality choices. And with those morality choices, if you don't do them right, they've gone through and done the split endings all over again. So what we're looking at is... Um, what is it? Dead Rising 2... Button Call of Duty. That's probably the simplest way I can put it. Well, no, it's sort of like um, the whole idea where you have you have many different endings you choose from, but then there just for the story to go off of they there is a is a right choice. So basically, it'll go off that right choice, whatever you do in the next game. But anyway, continue. Yeah, but like that's the thing. Call of Duty to streak away into that kind of morality choice 
is rare for it. Like, that's the first time it's ever been done in Call of Duty, and I'm going to say they pulled it off. Like, personally, I didn't like it, but they did pull it off. But it's not to its roots, and I'm not sure what other gamers who played the campaign thought about it. I'm a massive junkie for getting the perfect ending, so when I go through the wiki thing that I didn't get the perfect ending, I'm like, that's another how many hours I have to shove into the campaign to get a perfect ending once again. <coughs> Mission but, select. <coughs> yeah, but the thing is, Call of Duty is one of those games where the campaign is only desirable for the first playthrough. Exactly. So. All the Call of Duty games, you don't want to play the campaign more than once. So and the only reason no, you just... play the campaign afterwards is you brag your beater on the best difficulty possible and you've got all the intel. That's the only reason why I can see the repeat value in the campaign. But like that, that's just make that's all just all that's just, just all shot. no, that's just all MMSs in general though. Like there's only really the replay value of the campaign in most modern military shooters is just next to nil. There you have your heavily scripted Hollywood campaign which makes you go wow for the first time you go through it but like once you go through it it's like watching a movie again and if it's if it's a mediocre movie for in my book these two these games that we're talking about uh, then it's you don't really want to watch it again. You and for so like especially directly after you've just watched the movie you don't go watch the hobbit and then just go hey let's watch the hobbit a second time in the same sitting you don't do that yeah so like anyway continue before you try to tell me to shut up but i'm trying to think of a game off the top of my head that pulls it off but i can't at the moment i'll get back to that later on a later rant but that's the thing, I'll, not many games can pull away from their roots and keep their gamers happy. Like, as you said, replay value. It, like, for me, I don't want a game just for the multiplayer. The reason yeah. why I bought Crisis 2, campaign only. Exactly. I didn't give a crap about the multiplayer. I delved into the multiplayer. I didn't like the multiplayer personally in Crisis 2. But I loved the campaign and what you could do in the campaign and how you had the different options to do. And a lot of people are actually... This is, go, this is completely random, but... If you look at Crisis 2, you had the stealth option. You had the stealth no kill. You had the silent killing option. And you had the blare through everything option, just gunning everything down. When you look at it, the newest Tom Clancy Splinter Cell game, Blacklist, it's the exact same thing as that. I'm not saying the exact same thing, like, that it's the same style of gameplay, yeah, you, but everyone's, everyone's raging over it. They're saying, go back to its roots, this is absolutely terrible. And I'm like, no, it's still sticking to its roots because you still had those options in, the, in, in all of the games. They're just enforcing which one you want to specifically take now. Well, yeah, and then I know that we're getting really off the topic here of Battlefield, but anyway, in the Splinter Cell games in modern times, like the, what they've been doing is giving you the option to go guns blazing, and doing, mm. but still also enhancing stealth while doing that, like different options to do your stealth as well, like with the whole mark target thing, that is is handy if you want to do like the mark target and then go through a thing and kill every motherfucker, but whatever. Anyway, let's get back to the topic of uh, modern, uh, no, not modern warfare, battlefield. Uh, so from the and since we are talking about the scripted nature of it, um, I know you you like the scripted nature of the campaign. But um, do you think the the general idea of the narrative in from what we've seen uh, is any good? Yes. Um, when you look, I'm just going to do a quick comparison right now. When you look at the all the when you look at the battlefield, uh, when you let's just do Call of Duty versus battlefield campaigns in general. You have one bad nation attacking the UN. That's pretty much it. However, they do it up to them. They can do whatever they want. Battlefield, um, Russia, um, um. Battlefield 2. Black Ops. Yes, primarily Russia, but Black Ops 2, you had drones. In Battlefield 3, you had Russians sabotaging all sorts of shit. And I, not to say it's just the Russians that get picked on. Like, Armour 3, they're bringing in the Iran's. Like, the Iranians, they're taking over Greece. 
but the thing is that kind of really gets at me now that I've completely lost my train of thought. Uh, Russians, uh, are you going to go into the whole cliche Russian thing, or no, um, Russians? No, um... You got the bad guys no, who attack... No, I've got it, I've got it. Like, there was never any humanities about the campaigns. Any of the campaigns, like, I can't think of many, like, Dead Rising 2 got it right, they had, um, you had the many different endings and that could come about, but you also had the ability to be, like, a proper human being, caring human being, and saving everyone you possibly can. Or you could be that complete wanker who only cared about himself. That's the thing, though. And they did that really well. And that mixed in with the play style as well, and they had different endings to accommodate for that. Whereas, and that suits Dead Rising. Call of Duty and Battlefield, it's shoot people, you do this, you're a soldier, you shoot people. But what they're exploring in Battlefield 4 now is the um, human workings of the mind. And you can see that in the 17-minute trailer. You had to see your the, per, the person you play as make two insanely hard choices. And if you haven't seen it, I'm probably... If you haven't seen the trailer, I'm sure Jesse will link it in the description below. But yeah. he's forced to cut off the leg of his own squad mate to save him. I don't think any human being could do that. It they, like that's the thing with a lot of squad, like with a lot of army squads, four man squads. You've grown up in the army together. Like you've gone through the ranks together. Everything you're like brothers in arms, pretty much. So to cut off one of your own brother's legs is such a big shock. You can see the way he reacts after he does it. He even looks away as he cuts off the leg. Then you also have, after they crash the car into the, um, I'm going to assume is a river or an ocean, I don't know, crash the car into the water, the commanding officer orders him, orders your character to shoot out the car window so the, his three other squad mates can survive because his leg is pinned and they cannot get him out. That's something that no other FPS shooters have explored before. Well, okay, If are you going into the whole morality thing about the war? That's essentially what the whole idea of Spec Ops The Line is, is the horrors of war and what you have to face to, and, and, and what you have to face to, um, in war, and what the soldiers have to do. I know mm. uh, at, that's just an isolated incident, though, in the campaign. Yes, they have looked at a few different things, uh, or whatever, with looking into that, which I do uh, enjoy, but do you think that they actually are going to take it really de deep into the whole horrors of war, or do you think that's just going to be an isolated thing to enhance the whole Hollywood experience which they like to uh, bring? Well, personally, from what I see from the trailer, they added two separate incidences. Like, if you wanted to have a one or two off thing, you wouldn't have two in the trailer. Yeah. That's the thing. And the way they started the trailer was one of the horrors of war. Yep. Yeah. That's the thing. In the trailer, they had them trapped in the car. Then they did the, if I must say, cliche time warp backwards. So you replay the whole thing. That doesn't matter because you're still looking at the horrors of war because they Battlefield 4 has finally added dogs into the campaign, but the just seeing, like, obviously if a squad, like, personally I'm a massive dog lover, I couldn't shoot a dog, even if it was going to attack me or a comrade. I wouldn't have the guts to shoot a dog. And that's how they play so well because they had it so... When he actually took down the dog, he did it mercifully. He snapped the neck. He didn't brutalize it. He didn't rip anything off. He didn't shoot it. He just snapped the neck. And that's another thing. That's adding into the horrors of war. You're forced to do things you would never do in person. And just an ordinary civilian wouldn't think of doing those going through their head. But will they execute it right? That is the question. I think they have. Personally, from what I've seen from the 17-minute trailer, if they stick to what they've got and keep the choices like that, they're going to 
pull it off without a hitch as far as I'm concerned. Well, but it is early days. I when is the Battlefield Four release date? Uh, I do believe it is going to be fourth quarter this year, coming out for Christmas. That's my guess, anyway. A November release. <laughs> That's Battlefield Four release date has apparently been leaked for October twenty third. Says yeah. saying lots of sources right now. Yeah, so fourth. So qu- it's definitely fourth. Well. Yeah, fourth quarter for Christmas, uh, Christmas uh, just before Christmas. That's generally how it is. Anyway, um, so just a quick thing: go play Spec Ops the Line, and then talk. Then we can t- have a proper talk, talk about Horrors of War. But anyway, um, so let's just quickly look over the engine. Like I've been, sh- I've been just uh, going through the three different images here. Um, the one, Im- one of the images I have is when they're walking through the tree line just before they go out to, s- to see the construction area. Um, and just looking at the shading and, and whatnot in this is looking quite amazing. It's definitely an advancement on the Battlefield 3 engine that they use, which is uh, Frostbite 2. And it's just the lighting in general. Um, and also... It's basically what my quote is uh, of the day. A quote of the day is is uh, Battlefield 4 shiny. Uh, it looks shiny, has great sound assets, but still the same old game. So we'll get into cam- gameplay in a moment. Like we've touched on it briefly. So what are your thoughts on just the just what little enhancements have you noticed on the engine in general compared Hi. to? Compared to Frostbite Can you repeat the question? I was completely zoned out for a second there, sorry. Alright, so what what do you think the... Um, what are your opinion on the enhancements, and what are they, from Frostbite 2 to Frostbite 3? Well, from the looks of it, the disruption physics are the same, from what I've seen. Like, But then again, we weren't treated to that much. The most we were given was a grenade exploding a gas canister. But they made the explosions sound more realistic. The guns sound a lot more realistic. The communication between your team is a lot more realistic now. Like, once again, jumping back to um, so, um, Rainbow Six Vegas 2, there was a lot of communication between the team. Like, there's a lot of games that have that idle communication that work really well. It makes me feel a part of the battle. Whereas you have Jeff. Call of Duty where your AI teammates run behind cover and shoot. There's no conversation between them, and that's what kills it a bit for me, but they've added more ambient conversation between your squad mates. For example... That actually yeah. adds to the depth. For example, the the moment where he's like, his, I'll put on covering fire and you flank him. So basically there's this moment where there's this jeep uh, thing with a 50 cal gun on top, which has your squad pinned down. So what you uh, what the uh, your teammate says, uh, he'll uh, he'll put on some covering fire with his LMG while you uh, get a flank. So what you do, you get out a shotgun, shoot down like a tin wall or something, and then you go around and try and get a good flank on the uh, on the car, and then you go past it, and then you get up the good flank and you kill it or whatever. So these are just little things that I noticed with the AI, which uh, made you actually do something more than just try and do the head-on engagement, which I did like, I guess. So just yeah. anyway, to going back to actually end the engine, continue about what your conversation, your thing about that. Okay. From what we can see from there, they haven't done enough of a trailer to comment on the engine yet. Well, actually, I think I they, I th- I think I they can. I can't comment on the engine. Shush. I can't comment on the engine until I see what they've done for previous trailers, done for Battlefield 4, or physically play the game myself. So it's hard for me to pass judgment on the engine. I like the looks of it. I hope it works well with little glitches. Without like without the major bugs and all that. Oh, uh, the beta with but, the, how hilarious was the Battlefield Three beta where when you're like all crawl like when you're like all climbed out like when you're on when you go prone, that was freaking hilarious. Yeah, but like that's the thing like those kinds of things we don't want to see from day one. Well, that's, and unfortunately that... there have been some games that have done that from day one, and I like I'm with um. Game Informer magazine, it's a bad sign to have a massive update day one release. Yeah. And unfortunately for me, I was stupid enough to get Medal of Honor Warfighter, and <laughs> that was broken as shit. Like, I had so many passing bugs, 
and this was not this was a month or two after it came out when all these were apparently meant to be patched and they were still there so you can still see like uh, how long has it been since Battlefield 3? Uh, it's been about a year and a bit it wouldn't be a year yeah, well, it's been about a bit, been about a year, yeah. You're kidding, two or three years max. Um, no, it's been about a year or two, yeah. Yeah. 2011, because Warfighter came out last year, because they were at them at the yeah, time. At the years. time, they were doing a Battlefield War uh, and then Medal of Honor, like cycle each year. Anyway, um, yeah. I, I know you're about to go into something, but I just want to say how, um the sand physics actually do, it did look. Um, I probably should have gotten more pictures because I didn't realize we'd be talking so uh, so much. Anyway, the sand actually is looking, if you can look in the background here, the sand is looking a lot nicer with it flowing through the air. And there's a lot more like dust and particle effects sort of thing uh, when you shoot something and like the dust will fly up off of it. It, it does look a lot, uh, it does look a lot better in that regard. Um, you did also uh, see a lot of um, the water look effects were pretty nice during the gameplay trailer. They mm -hmm. go through a bit with a bit of water, so that's kind of nice. Um, and there's the sh just the general shooting does look very uh, does look quite nice. I do like the fact how they got the thing how you can look down the scope and then all look down the iron sights. You haven't been able to do that for the longest time. Like I know, mm -hmm. again, so that's kind of cool. Um, well, my. Yeah. As quick as that is, is they're not going to have that as a default thing. Yeah. I don't mind that it's not a default thing. Um, I don't mind if they keep it as a campaign only thing. Look at Modern Warfare 3, for example. Um, yeah. You had one level where you could do that, and that was on a sniper rifle. Yeah. yeah. But I, I didn't mind that it was a campaign only thing. Yeah, it, it, it's it, adds, it adds to it, but then again, like yeah, I, it adds to it. It adds just adds to because that's what actually is uh, what actually is a thing. It actually is a thing in the in real life. It adds to the immersion to the already immersion filled game. It's mm. supp supposedly immersion, but anyway, let's actually get into gameplay because we're actually been talking for a long time, and I want to wrap this up yeah. sometime soon. So, um, f the actual gameplay. Uh, so, wh how do you? F I know you haven't actually been able to feel it because you can't actually uh, know how a game feels until you actually play it. Uh, just from the looks of the shooting and the movement, and uh, I, we've briefly looked at AI, but how do you think all of that f ties in to o overall? How does that? How do you think the gameplay has improved? I think it's it's a lot smoother and crisper now. Like. Oh, it's hard to explain. Like person, like everyone has their own personal preferences. But for me, it seems a, like the AI, like the enemy AI, seemed like they were knowing a bit more what they were doing. Like in some cases, you'd have AI just stand there dumbly while you tossed frag grenade after frag grenade at them. But these guys saw that, like the AI, from what I can remember, I think. Yeah, actually, they saw you toss the frag grenade at the fuel tank, and they actually moved away out of the blast radius. Also, like, they were smart enough to do that, so they're adding some human aspects to the AI now. Also, there was a moment where you, where they were at, like, a wall or something, firing on a building, and they see you, you uh, come in one door and kill a few guys, so one guy takes cover to actually fight off. <coughs> fend off against where you are at the door, so but you ended up mm. the guy ended up flanking him and killing him anyway. But like I did like the fact that they were actually reacting; they they weren't so static as what you, we've yeah. seen in Call of Duty and previous Battlefield ti uh, titles. They weren't just going through their path; they actually are reacting to what you're doing. And so that is some, uh, that is an improvement, I guess, on the AI. Didn't we didn't really say that before, but like. Um, they actually are improving. Like the actual gameplay does feel a lot more realistic, even though it's not that realistic anyway. Mm -hmm. And like, what are your thoughts on the actual gunplay? Just from just from looking at it, I think they've <laughs> finally got the gun sounds right. Um, I've seen Frankie on PC in 1080p. I'm a, I'm subscribed to him. He's actually really interesting. He does a lot of good analysis, but 
he's quite spot on. Like, in the trailer, you see for those few seconds where he's firing the M16 from the building that the M16 pulled up to the right. And I haven't shot an M16 before, but according to research, that's a quite a common thing for a lot of um, M16 rifles or a lot of the M series rifles. Yeah, like a lot, a lot of the Americans' roots. So lot. the M14, the M4, they all pull upwards and to the right, and they're actually getting the right recoil path for the weapons. But that adds more to the realistic feel to it. The question is, will they actually have bullet drop? Because bullet drop has is has been a thing sort of in Battlefield, but I feel it hasn't been to the greatest of effect because there's like next to no bullet drop, and you can only notice it a little bit when you're trying to snipe over a large distance. But even then, it's not that much of a bullet drop. Do you think that they will have uh, enhanced um, physics on that matter, or do you reckon they'll just stick with what they've already got? I think they got the nail on the head. It I know I'm a cliche for using that term, but they did get it right in Battlefield 3. I'm a massive multi... I extensively play multiplayer in Battlefield 3, and I I can play any class, but when I, no matter what class I play, I notice that they have the bullet damage drop-off spot on. Like, <coughs> I mainly use the F2000, and I know the stats. It's bullets drop-off starts at 4 meters and stops at 25 meters. But that's the damage range. Once it's once the bullet starts traveling over a hundred meters, you're going to start needing to um, lead your target name higher, which is what you have to do with a lot of guns, including the assault rifles, SMGs, PDWs, LMGs, sniper rifles, every single thing. If the target's over, say, 50 meters, you will need to start leading your shots. And if you're using those powerful, if you're using those powerful weapons such as the um. M forty nine, M forty four Magnum. You need to you need to leave that shot in order to hit those shots because you've only got six of those and they've got it right. So you have to lead the target the whole way, and that's the only way to hit them. And that's just with a handgun, and they're effective to fifty meters if not if you're lucky to get a handgun effective to fifty meters. Yeah. Well, I definitely. So they start Sorry. the drop off in the leading from maybe about thirty meters, but you start to notice it at fifty meters with assault rifles that you need to start leading and aiming higher in order to get those hits, and it's quite good. Like I think they've got the physics right. Shooting down an opponent, you don't have to adjust for much um, drop. Aiming up, you need to adjust for drop. Um, it's going to be bad if they add wind resistance to it. I think that'd be taking it too realistic. Just keep with the bullet drop. Don't add wind resistance. That's the only thing I have to say about that. All right. Well, that's basically about it for Battlefield 4. We've talked about the engine, we've talked about the gameplay, and just talking about the campaign in general. We've uh, talked about the Unreal Engine and all of its aspects, and as well as Battlefield 4. I think that will wrap it up for this week's, uh, all this time's uh, ranting and news and whatnot. Uh, I think next time I will be doing this with Sam, and we are going to be doing, uh, we'll probably cover MGS, uh, MGS 5, because that is a thing, and MGS5 is a lovely, lovely thing and news to our ears. And then we'll probably do something along the lines of maybe... Actually, no, I'll save armor for a time where I get a friend of mine to come on or something. But we'll do something else and that's new in the in the gaming news scene. So, yeah. Um, do you got anything you would want to say before I do my outro? No, that's pretty much... I'm done pretty much. Alright then, well thank you guys very much for watching this uh, first episode of this very not so fleshed out news segment from the us guys at Dominion Gaming. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out. See ya.